welcome to episode two of the Journey Through Yarn Knitting podcast. Hi, I'm Rebecca. I'm a knitter based in Scotland and this is my little corner of the internet where I chat all things knitting, what I've recently finished, what's on my needles at the moment and lots of yarny goodness that I hope to cast on in the near future. Today I am back with a more traditional podcast episode. Um, a huge thank you for the lovely response on my last episode which was my winter knitting plans. I have cast on one of those 10 items and I'm hoping to cast on the Wilkhaven sweater very very soon but unfortunately I don't have the needles at the moment so I'm waiting to receive those in the post and then I will get started on that. But today I have three finished objects, one work in progress and two acquisitions and a very very exciting announcement. I, I teased in my last video that I had an exciting announcement to share and that it would be announced in a fortnight's time in my next podcast. This is coming a lot sooner than I originally had planned. This is coming out not even a week since my last video, purely because I'm so excited about it. Um, yeah, and it, it felt like the right time to do it now rather than wait. So I have timestamps throughout the video as always. Um, so if there's a specific thing you'd like to see, you can skip ahead and jump back. I also try to keep a very detailed description box with all the links to my Ravelry pages, um, yarns and everything that I mention will be in the description box. I think that's all the housekeeping. Yeah, so we'll just get on into it. I don't have any knitwear on today. It's actually surprisingly sunny, although the sun keeps coming and going, so I'm hoping lighting will um, be okay for us. So it's quite warm in, in my living room today. So I am wearing a blouse that I have sewn. I made this back in May. And this is the Anthea blouse by Anna Allen Clothing. It's a really, really nice, it's got a nice, hem with a bit of a curve, puff sleeve, it's very on trend, really simple to make um, and I love it, it's nice and roomy and comfy. The sleeves aren't elasticated, they are bound with bias binding so yeah they're not tight to my skin, to my arm and I really like it. The fabric was actually a vintage tablecloth I picked up in Harrogate last summer and there was about just over a meter and I've managed to get a blouse out of it so I really I'm really really pleased with that I do try to look in charity shops and thrift shops for fabric that I could upcycle and this is definitely my favorite upcycling project the buttons they can't they almost match the fabric which I really really like they're just I imagine acrylic buttons plastic from Etsy Again, I will link that down below. Sadly, I won't be able to link the fabric, but yes, a sewing project for a change. Um, so that is what I'm wearing. As I said, I have three finished objects. Two of them were works in progress in my last podcast and one is completely new. So we'll start with what you've already seen. And the first thing that I have finally finished, although not blocked, so I've woven in the ends, which is half the battle, but um, I finished the single vault sweater. This is for my fiance Ben's Christmas present and I'm thrilled with it. This is by Max the Knitter. It's a top down ragland with all over texture. And I'm just, I just love it. I have tried it on and it fits me. I will also add in some B-roll of me wearing this. Just bear in mind that this is not made to fit me. And it's not been blocked. So 
the sleeves actually fit me but I really really do hope that they grow slightly so this is number one I've made this using Cascade 220 which is 100% Peruvian Highland wool in the shade Hazel Heathers so it's a slightly like mottled melanged colour so it's not a solid brown and I really really love it I love the the texture yeah it's I would highly recommend this project it did take me a long time to do I started this back in May but that's purely because I was trying to keep it a secret and so far I have I've told him not to watch my previous videos um, so he knows something knitting related is coming at Christmas but he just doesn't know what so it's taken me long because so long because I I've been trying to do it in secret I in the evenings we tend to just sit on the sofa together so that's when I do most of my knitting and I've not been able to knit on it then so I think if if it wasn't top secret I it would be quite uh, it knits up really quite quick on 5.5 millimeter needles worsted weight yarn and it's a really really enjoyable stitch pattern to knit so I would highly recommend the pattern and I will keep you updated on how how it goes come the 25th of December um, my favorite thing about this sweater other than the stitch pattern is the raglan it's two by one Ragland, and then it goes all the way up into the sleeve again this hasn't been blocked so it's probably not the best representation and then that leads into the cuff so from the collar Ragland sleeve into the cuff i really like it it's a it's a simple but well thought out design and i think as knitters it's got those really nice details that we appreciate whereas someone who maybe doesn't knit wouldn't think much about small details like that but I really do I really do love these details um yeah and that's I don't have much more to say on this I talk a lot about this in my previous episode so not to repeat myself too much if you want to go back and have a look at it there again that video is time stamped but I have finally finished the single bolt about six months in the making um, final stages to block it so it's technically not completely finished but the knitting is finished so yes first ob finished object I was absolutely delighted when this was finished and off the needles it was it was almost like hanging over me the thought I do have a, quite a few gift knits but this is definitely the the biggest and the most challenging of them so it felt like a big achievement. So that's the single malt sweater. My second finished object, again, it was a whip in my previous podcast episode, so I won't talk too much about it. So if you want to go back and see that video again, again, timestamps. And this is my Soul Sister Scarf by Sari Norland. I posted this on my Instagram and it was quite well received. It's got this lovely rib dip stitch detail all the way through it and it has a point at both ends of the scarf. When I showed it in my previous podcast, it was curling up, but this has now been blocked, pinned in place, and it has this, a really nice sharp, comes into a nice sharp point. And yeah, this stitched pattern as expected completely bloomed and opened up and it's just gorgeous and I love it and it's so soft and cozy. This is made out of hand spun yarn from Lunan Bay Farm. Yes, Lunan Bay Farm. They were at the Scottish Wool Producers Showcase in Perth back in March and they had a few skeins of hand spun yarn. So this is a combination of alpaca merino and some of their cashmere their like own grown cashmere from 
the role in Herd of Cashmere Goats. And they're based in Fife, which is just down the road from me. And yeah, it was really special, a really special knit. So this is a definitely a more of an occasion wear scarf. I'm not just going to wear this for popping to the shops. I love it. I would highly recommend Lunan Bay Farm, their yarns. I think they have some on their website or you can contact them. And I think they're starting doing like in the new year goat like experiences, experience days where you can go and see their goats and see how they they collect the fibre from the goats when they're naturally shedding in the spring and see how it's all hand spun up, which sounds incredible and I, I would love to do. So I'm keeping an eye out for updates on that. Yes, this is the Soul Sister scarf and it blocked out beautifully. Very happy with it. This isn't like, this is completely off gauge. I had two skeins of 25 gram hand spun yarn. I just knit a whole skein, marked halfway and then knit again. It's kind of the width is between the smallest and the largest size. So again, not quite a pattern, but it's a scarf and I'm okay with it being off gauge. I'm happy with the length, maybe in an ideal world it would have been slightly longer, but that's all I had to work with. But I am very, very happy with it. Yeah, love the yarn, love the pattern. Um, it did again take quite a while, but it was one that I just picked up and put down and it was very, very easy to remember the stitch pattern and easy to come back to. And then after I filmed my last podcast, I was really quite excited about it again and um, just got it finished that day. So there are my two projects that you've seen before. They were whips and now they are finished. My next one is an Oslo hat by Petit Knit. This took me about three days to knit. Um, I mean, I was exclusively missing on this for three days. I just kind of, I just hyper-focused on it. And this is a triple, I'm sure you've all seen the Oslo hat, but it's a triple folded um, brim. And then it is very, very fitted. Again, I, I will add some photos of me wearing it. I mean, I'll pop it on, but hey, uh, yeah. It's a really nice, like, fitted hat. Um, this is made in, I have some of it here. It's the Border Mills Cheviot. And this is again a knit for Ben. So he's got two out of the three finished objects this episode. Um, lucky for him. And this is a sport weight wool. Pure North, Con North Country's Cheviot Lambs wool. Um, 50 grams is 125 meters so it's off gauge again I knit this with I want to say 108 stitches I'm not sure if that's the pattern so it's really quite tight me and Ben have quite a similar head size so and we both like a tight fitting hat again this might be a shared item but um, yeah I'm happy with it I, I would make the Oslo hat again I think if I was to do it again, I would use a provisional cast on. I just picked up, so you you knit, and then when you fold it back down to get the double folded, like you would a double folded collar, you pick up your stitches. I, I think it's a combination of it being a finer, a, a tighter gauge, so the stitches were slightly closer together and harder to see. And it's quite a woolly wool, so again, that makes the stitch definition slightly less defined. So, I don't know if you can see, it's slightly slanted, which I was a bit annoyed about. I tried with blocking to kind of pull it back a bit, but this is how it's ended up, and it's fine. I think next time I would definitely do a provisional cast on and then I can really cleanly pick up those stitches. Um, but yeah, other than that, happy with the fit. Ben is very happy with the fit. Um, Ben's not really into woolly, woolly, rustic um, wool yarn, which is why I was very 
cautious about choosing um, a yarn for his single malt and that's why I ended up going with Casca 220 but he seems to be okay with it um, yeah it's, it is a rustic wool and it's chibi and it's what I expected but it is really rustic I mean I was knitting and I was pulling out bits of straw we're talking rustic um, it, again it's a hand dyed yarn and when I blocked it well washed it to block a lot of dye like a lot a lot of dye came out I'll add a photo I took a photo of the water it was bright blue and the hat is still blue so it lost a lot of dye but it's not like completely stripped it and this is this this is how much I had left so I don't know if you can see this was it like before I washed it there is a slight difference I'm okay with it it's just something that if you want to try this yarn to be mindful of um, yeah it did it did lose a lot of dye I don't know if I would use this exact wool again I would definitely try a different type of yarn that the border mill has to offer they do an alpaca and rose fiber blend which sounds really really nice so I would be up to try more of their yarns I would maybe just not knit in their chibi yet again but really happy with my finished Oslo hat and we'll be keeping us warm this winter so that's my finished objects um I only have one work in progress that is because after I filmed my winter plans video I decided what I wanted to cast on because I kind of I finished the single malt and I didn't have a garment of my own to be knitting on so it, it was the time to start something new so I wanted to start my bulk haven sweater as I said but I don't have the measles for it so I'm kind of holding off until they arrive and then I'm going to start on that so hopefully next episode there'll be at least a swatch of that but I did manage to cast on and get a fair way through Ooh, I'm all tangled my Christmas pudding socks by Stone Knits, Charlotte Stone. They are this lovely, lovely colour work. It's not too heavy colour work, it's just a band around the leg. And they've got tiny little Christmas puddings. The colour work is a little bit uneven and I'm hoping blocking will sort it out. But I'm really happy with these. I'm missing them two at a time, which is something that I've never done before. But I really, really, I really suffer from second sock syndrome and I know I'm not the only one. So I thought, right, if I'm going to get these done to a deadline, ideally the 1st of December, I need to knit them two at a time. So that's what I did. And I really, I'm a complete convert to it. I'm using Magic Loop to knit them two at a time. And I'm just, I'm delighted that when they're finished, I'll have two socks. Um, I cast on the cuffs individually and then I put them on the same cable and then I knit the colour work two at a time as well and there was five strands to manage and it was utter chaos but we made it through. It was a lot of hard yarn management. I'll add, I took a photo again of all the strands coming off. I actually had to knit it up my coffee table and have each like strand and ball perfectly placed and then maybe every two rounds they'd all be tangled again so I'd have to unwind them and put them back in their place. So that was a slow process but it actually I actually kind of enjoyed it. It was really it forced me to be slow and it forced me to be mindful and Colour work I'm still fairly new to, as I mentioned in the last video. So I'm okay that it was a bit frustrating at times. I'm, I tell you what, I'm glad I'm past it now though. Um, I think if I was to do something like this in the future, I would knit 
each one past the colour work and then after the colour work start knitting them two at a time. But hindsight's a great thing. I am knitting these on a 2.25 millimetre needle and I'm really I really like the stitching. It's I'm used to knitting my socks on a 2.75 mil needle and I really really like this tight gauge. I've tried them on just to see how how much more I need to knit. But I really like how tight they are to my foot, how well fitted they are. And I think I will start doing my socks on a 2.25. Yeah, I'm really happy with the gauge. I'm using a few yarns for this. Oh, before we go into the yarn, I'm using these Likey needles. I have their interchangeable set in the Driftwood. Um, and I really like them. I prefer wooden needles to metal needles, mainly because when I'm knitting, I tend to... I have to think about this use my forefinger, my left hand, yeah, my left hand forefinger to push the needle through a bit. So when it's a really sharp metal needle, it's, it can be quite sore. So I do prefer wooden needles on the whole. And that's why I bought, I bought these because I have had good experiences with the larger sizes. But I don't know if you can see that, I've snapped the tip. And it's fine, it doesn't snag on the yarn at all. It's just sometimes, sometimes it does just split, split the stitch a bit. But it's not, it's not too annoying. I might replace these for my next pair of socks. But they are really fine and I suppose quite fragile. But yeah. That was a bit sad. So the yarns I'm using for this, the burgundy colour is a valley yarn, a Huntington Valley yarn in this shade Merlot and it's a really nice like brown burgundy, almost matches my nails. Um, and that's the main, the main colour. The white, in, which is in this band, the pudding and will be the heel and the toe is again Huntington Valley yarn in their natural colour. I really like this yarn. It's really, really, really soft. I'm really interested to find out how it will wear though. I don't know, it's already kind of like, I don't know if you can see that, but it's already slightly pilling a bit and I've not even worn them yet. Um, But it's really soft. I like the colour. I think it's really nice Christmas sock. It is quite a splitty yarn. I mean, a combination of my blunt needle, but yeah, the the really loosely plied. So it's just sometimes I'll have to go back if I've split split a strand. Um, but overall, very happy with it in terms of the colour work. The green and the brown are Regia. Um, yarns. It's a German yarn. I got it on Lovecrafts. I will link everything down below. And I don't think these have names, they're numbers. So again, description box for all of that. Um, the red is Lang 150 Merino. It's a, it's a four ply but it's 350 meters per 100 grams. Maybe it's not. Lang Yarns Merino 150 Superwash. Yeah, 50 grams is 150 meters. So slightly thicker, but it's it's worked out okay because it's only a, a little bit of colour work. And the the dusky like pink grey beige background is a Longebeck Anna Merino, which is a Superwash four ply. In the, sea, in the shade June. So I'm really happy, so close to finishing. There is a bit of colour work before you do the, the toe. I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm just going to knit and do the toe. 
I tend to like to wear my hand at socks with my Birkenstock Bostons so you won't even see the toe and I'm worried that the strands will just be annoying me. So I'll just keep it plain and have all the colour work on the leg. So very, very happy with these. Really quick to knit up. I mean, I cast them on and once I'm past the colour work, it was just plain sailing. So my only work in progress. But it's making me feel very festive. I've had the Christmas music on already. Don't come for me. And I've been knitting on and I've my Christmas socks and I've been living my best life. So that's my work in progress. My next acquisitions, I have two, well, I have two really. I have I'm sure you most of you will recognise this. But this is the West Yorkshire, West Yorkshire Spinners Signature 4 Ply in the colour Gingerbread. It's a self-striping gingerbread coloured yarn. Um, I'm planning on just knitting a vanilla sock in this. Again, another Christmas sock. I may get away with wearing them more than just at Christmas, which is why I'm making a second Christmassy sock and I bought I bought this actually originally for my Christmas pudding socks but it, it was too similar a colour to the Christmas pudding so I went with the June instead but this is John Arburn Exmoor sock four ply in the shade Bibble Bug and it's really nice brown but it's kind of got a purpley hue to it so my plan is for this to be the heel and the toe to be my stripy gingerbread socks. My final acquisition before we get on to the exciting announcement is I have bought some yarn cones. I've bought cones in the past. I quite like them. I've never actually used a full cone, but I think this time I will. So I have two cones. The first, is quite bare. That's because I have wound half of it off into cakes because I want to hold it double. So I have two cakes and then this cone. And I have another full cone. And these are the Woolly Knit Merino four ply cones. They are 470 meters and 100 grams, I think. And you get 500 grams on a cone. So it's a light fingering weight yarn, so holding it double will give me a DK. Um, this is in the shade Boro Brown. Quite an earthy brown, quite similar to the John Arbin sock yarn I just showed you, but maybe not as purple. And the second one I have is still a whole cone, and it is in the shade Bronze Brown. So it's quite a burgundy colour. It's maybe, it's quite a bit lighter than is coming up. Oh, there we go. That's a bit better. It's like a burgundy rust autumn brown almost. It's quite nice. It's really interesting. I'm not entirely sure what I have planned for this. But I got these using Venetia, the woolly worker. She is currently doing a collaboration with Woolly Knit. And until 20th of November, you can use a discount code to get 20% off Woolly Knits Merino 4 ply cones, which is a really, really good offer. And that's why I got two. Um, she's also doing a collaboration with Wool Woolly Knit um, over on Instagram. So go and check that out if you'd be interested in these cones. So... I will come back to the first cone in a minute, as it's already slightly bare, but just to finish this video off, I have a really, really exciting announcement. Well done if you've made it this far in the video, but I will be back in just a moment.
Ta-da! This is the exciting announcement. I have designed my very, very, very first sweater. This is the Irene sweater. Um, it is a top-down, drop-shoulder construction sweater. It's really, really roomy. It's designed to have 20 centimetres of positive ease. Um, I'm just ecstatic about it, to be honest. Um, the yoke, so the back, the shoulders, and then the front are work flat. And then you join in, the, join in the round to knit the body. The sleeves are knit in the round. And yeah, it has a double folded collar. Um, which is quite, quite a wide neckline as well, which I really, really liked and wanted to have in this design. And the texture, which I'm really, really pleased with and really excited about. The texture is... It's a continuous textured stripe pattern and it has a stripe with dip stitches and pearl bumps. And I feel like the dip stitches almost look like the flower head of a snowdrop or a bluebell. And I just love it. There's also a split hem. This one. A split hem detail. But I've also written instructions for this to just be a regular hem as well. So the choice is really yours. Um, it, it's not been a secret. Um, by any means it's just I've just been working away at it really quietly and it's just been a complete pleasure project for me and now felt like the right time to announce it to the world so I've called it the Irene sweater because my nana my nana Irene she taught me to knit as very young age and that's where my knitting journey started and I'm really really grateful of that I feel truly lucky to have had that growing up knitting has been a part of my life for a very long time and this feels like a new journey so that's why i've called it the irene sweater because it really did start with my nana irene um and i'm it's it's lovely and oversized and comfy and cozy and i'm, I'm really pleased with it i'm really proud of it um i have made it in cascade 220 for a few reasons, I wanted a nice, I wanted a cosy soft yarn and I've knit a lot with Cascade 220 so I feel like it's a yarn that I've tried and tested and I truly trust. I also think it's a really nice yarn for texture. That's why I chose it for the single mole and that is why I've chosen it for this design. Um, so Cascade 220 has a meterage of 200 meters and 100 grams. The same as Fulkalana Peruvian Highland wool, so I suppose that's an option as well. Um, comes in nine sizes, so A to I. The get my laptop, get the numbers right. Size A is to fit a bust circumference 75 centimeters or 29.5 inches. And size I is to fit a bust circumference of 155 centimetres or 61 inches. And then there's the 20 centimetres positive ease on top of that. Um, really, really excited about it. As I've been talking, I will have hopefully added some photos, some close-up photos, some B-roll. This, this has been professionally tech edited and graded by Rebecca Williamson, who is a fantastic fantastic tech editor. I cannot rate her highly enough. I have learnt so much through this process. It was a humbling experience to receive my corrections back but actually I have learnt so much from it. I've learnt so much about garment construction and grading and sizing and all these things that you need to consider across different sizes and yeah she's truly been a teacher and yeah fantastic fantastic tech editor so it's in the final stages of its tech edit now and I will be opening a public test knit call in the next hopefully the next week um, I'm hoping to have I will be having a really really nice 
relaxed test knit. I'm gonna run this test knit from hopefully starting in December all the way through to March. It's gonna be a nice long lengthy test knit. I'm really used I'm definitely more used to being on the test knitter side than the designer side so I'm using that to my advantage and yeah really thinking about what test knitters would value so it's going to be really lengthy and um, a really nice community feel we'll also in the description box of this video leave the sizing information and the yardage um, and meterage details so if you do want to do this test now even before the test call is out you can get your yarn sorted or see what's in your stash again you don't have to use cascade 220 just whatever you can whatever you have to meet gauge and i'm saying it now because black friday is coming and i know a lot of the big um, yarn stores online yarn stores do fairly good de deals so if you want to get your test knit supplies in that that seems like the perfect opportunity um, I will probably do a very short separate video maybe in the next week going into all the like details that if you do want to test knit it's all going to be there this is just kind of the the putting it out into the world for the very first time aspect of the video and um, if you do want to test knit the Irene sweater um, do drop me a DM over on Instagram if you have any more questions about it it's an exciting new step and yeah I hope you love the sweater as much as I do so just before we finish coming back to the the woolly neck cone I have a swatch Maybe actually this way around. And I am going to cast on. Well, I've written up the pattern, I just need to actually knit the sample for the slip over version of the Irene sweater. But not to get ahead of myself. That that will be in the work that's in the works too. Um yeah. I don't know how to end this video now, I'm just like full of excitement. That's all my my current knitting plans, um, my current knitting designs and I will see you very soon. My next video will be either a podcast or my gift knitting video and I might think about having some other festive videos along the way as well. But thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate you all being here and yeah, I look forward to seeing you all very, very soon. Bye now.